Hi everybody, I'm CryptoCat and we're going to have a look at some of the challenges from last year's Leet Up Live CTF. These are all beginner friendly challenges, three of them were in the warm-up category and one was in the crypto category. So if you want to have a look at some more advanced challenges, there are some videos on my channel and also on Integrity's channel from last year. Anyway, this is the first one. I'm in CyberChef at the moment, which is a tool made by the GCHQ, which has loads of different encoding and decoding functionality in it. And this was a challenge. You literally just got this text. And if you don't know what kind of decoding this could be, maybe by the characters that are being used or the structure of it or the capitalization, things like that, then there is a nice function in CyberChef called Magic, which will try a lot of different types of decoding and see what the output looks like and whether it makes sense. And in doing this, you can see I've got quite a few. These are recipes. So if I click on any of these, it will give us the recipe. And then you can see this looks a bit like Morse code. This looks like URL encoding. So if you haven't really seen these types of encoding, you might not spot it. And this will be able to help you. And let me click on one of them. I think it's actually, this has probably got the furthest because it has the Morse code. But let's just say we got to this one instead. So this recipe is doing a base64 decode and then a base32 decode. And this looks like it is now URL encoded. So I can just search here for URL, go to decode and add that to the recipe. And now it's decoded. And then I mentioned as well, this looks a bit like Morse code. So if you don't know that, then next time you see it, you'll know. This looks like hex because it's all zero to nine and then A to F. So again, we could just do magic or we could do that from hex. There we go. And again, this looks like base64 because we've got those two equals at the end. And then the only special characters in here are the slash and the equals. So let's try that, base64. And there we go, we get the flag. On to the second challenge. This one was called Over the Wire 1, and it was a PCAP file, which you can see I've opened up in Wireshark. And some things that you can do in here if you're not used to doing forensics challenges or challenges which have packet captures, you can have a look at the file properties to get some ideas about the statistics. So how long was the packet capture run for? How many packets did it capture? What are the sizes and things like that? Just to get a general overview. You can also have a look at the protocol hierarchy. So this is very important because you might want to find out, well, we do want to find out what interesting protocols have been used. For example, FTP, maybe there's something HTTP. Not likely we're going to be interested in HTTPS unless we are able to extract the certificates in order to decrypt it. So if we want to look into one of these, let's say FTP, we can go apply as filter. And now it will only show us this FTP traffic. And if we see something specific we like, like here's something saying flag.zip. So let me follow that TCP stream. And that basically puts all those together so that we can just have a look at this in text format. If it's a plain text connection, we can see then the flag.zip was transferred over. And there was also a reminder.txt that was transferred and a readme. So what we might do here, let's go, well, let's get the flag first of all. Here was the request for the flag. So I am going to apply that. Now we're already in a filter, so I've got that selected. I'm going to exit that filter and here it was. So this is where the transfer is actually starting. So I'm going to right click that and I'll follow the TCP stream. Oh no, that was the wrong thing. Let me close that again. So we don't want that. We want the where it actually starts the data. Here we go. So right click this one, follow TCP stream. Now we have the data. If you know file signatures, you might recognize this as being the zip file signature PK and we can save this. So I'm going to save this as raw and then let's go to save as I will save this to the desktop. I'll save it here and it is flag.zip. There we go saved and now if we try to unzip it it's asking us for a password so let's go back to wireshark and let us exit that let's go back and i think we did see something in ftp again so i'm going to filter that at the top yeah right at the beginning see we have this password which is mentioned so i'm going to go in here and take a copy of this as text although i think that's going to take the hex as well. Let me just follow it. I'll follow this. I'll copy the password. And then we can try that again, unzip, and it says it's an incorrect password. So again, we'll go back. Remember there was some other files in here. We had this reminder.txt. So I'm going to exit this TCP stream because we don't want the request to get the reminder. We want the actual raw data, which is here. So I'm going to follow that. Oh, that's the wrong one again. TCP stream. Okay. And it says, 
The flag is really important, so I had to encrypt it in case it falls into the wrong hands. You already know the FTP password. Just use the same here, but update it accordingly. And I think quite a lot of people got stuck here, actually. Really, what you had to do was just to update the password for the year. So this was 2022, but the CTF was in 2023. So if you update it, that's it. You will get the correct flag. Okay, next up, we have Over the Wire Part 2, which was, as you would guess, Part 2 of this challenge. And I'm going to do the same thing. Let's go into the protocol hierarchy. You can also go into conversations up here. It can sometimes be interesting, particularly if you've got a very big packet capture and you need to really just focus on particular IP addresses or MAC addresses, then that might be useful. I did also put some benign traffic in here. So you can see there's a request to Google. I think we loaded the integrity website and things as well. Just to try and mix up the traffic a little bit. Might have had some other protocols running in the background because we don't just want you to instantly find the flag in here. So yeah, let's go to the protocol hierarchy again. This one has HTTP, which might be interesting. We could filter by that, but I don't think it was interesting, actually. We also have SMTP, so I will filter by that because here we go. We've got some mails, and you can see this one is going to CryptoCat. I can do the follow again. I always go to apply as filter, but it's been a long time since we... Okay, I'm not actually going to read all that out, but basically we need to find a new secure method of transferring our files, and SMTP isn't secure because, as you can see, this is all in plain text, and we need to protect our files. Let's see. Let's go out of that stream. Let me go to SMTP and we'll just scroll through it again. You can see some data was sent over here. So let me actually follow that. Hi, CryptoCat. I want to buy a cat. I know you already have some nice cats. What do you think about this cat? Let me know if possible. And then you can see that this was sent over in base64 format. I'm going to open up VS Code and I'll just do new.v64. I'm going to paste this in here and get rid of all the non base 64 stuff. There we go. And then I'm going to base 64 decode it. So base 64 D, and we're going to send it out to new. I want to check what type of file it is. It's a JPEG. So I'm going to move that to, I don't know, pick.jpg. Let's try and open it up. There we go. It's displayed. I don't know how to zoom out on Image Magic. I guess you have to use this menu option or something. But yeah, we've got this picture of a cat anyway. Maybe we would try some things like Foremost, which you can use to see if there's anything embedded inside of this. You can also do that with Inmore, but there isn't. It's just got the JPEG, so we can remove that. We can also check the strings, maybe, or the EXIF data. So that's like the metadata that's associated with the image. And if we check the EXIF data, there is a comment in here saying something like this, question mark. But that's all that we'll find in that image. So let's go back again. SMTP. So as that sent, there was also another message here. Let me follow the TCP stream. This one says, I love all kind of cats, but I prefer this cat. And then we have another base64 encoded message. So I'm going to repeat the same thing, just get rid of the non-base64 data. And we'll go and see what the file type is. Okay, let me close all this. Let's just repeat the exact same thing. So there we go. The file type is new, or the file type of new is PNG. I'm going to move new to pick.png. We could check again, XF tool, pick.png. And there are no comments in this one. We could also do foremost and bin walk and things like that, check the strings, but we won't find anything. Actually, in this case, steganography has been used. So you can use tools like steghide and jsteg. There's also one called zsteg which deals with PNG images. And if I give it the pick, or I need to give it the full name. Yeah, there we go. So basically there's an LSB steganography attack or a technique being used here, which basically just embeds data in the least significant bit of each pixel. So if you've got a color image, you've got three channels, RGB, or you've got RGB and alpha, four channels. And you can basically modify this, the last bit of each of those pixels or each of those color channels to put a bit of data in there. And the most you're going to affect the color by is one value, right? So if you've got a color and it's like, I mean, the color range is up to 255. So if you've got a color and it's 254, all you're doing is changing it from 254 to 255 or down one. It's basically not going to have any visual impact on the image. But if somebody knows that there's something embedded in that area, they can then just loop through all the pixels, grab the last bit, and then concatenate it and convert it into text in this case. But 
It could very easily be another image or a video file or a document or anything that you can represent as binary data. So the final challenge we're going to look at is called Keyless, and it's an easy crypto challenge from last year. And the players were given this script, and you can see that it's got a redacted flag. So you need to basically reverse this encrypt function. So you can just make a corresponding decrypt function. And how would you go about doing that? Well, you want to reverse it. It's got to go backwards. So we'll start off by doing this part, which was XORing with 2.3. So we'll XOR the encrypted message with 2.3. Then we're going to go back to this stage, which we need to subtract 7. Then we need to divide it by 3. And let me just actually open up the solve script so we can see this as well. So yeah, we're first XORing it. Next, we are going to add 7. I think I might just set subtract 7. We're going to add 7. Then we're going to divide it by 3. And then we have the B part. So yeah, instead of adding 5, we're going to subtract 5. And then we're going to XOR with 42. And then instead of adding 10, we're going to subtract 10. And then we're going to divide by 2. And there we go. That's exactly how we do it. We put it all together and that will give us the flag at the end. Anyway, while I've still got your attention, let me just plug our monthly challenges. Integrity runs a monthly challenge almost every month and we add write-ups to our Git book at the end. So if you as a community member make some write-ups, we'll link them here. We'll give out prizes for the best ones and stuff like that. So make sure to check this out if you want to learn about web security all year round, not just when it comes to the annual CTF. And if you've got any interesting challenges, if you found any cool bugs recently, and you want to showcase them in a challenge, then you can give me a shout on Discord. Anyway, that is it. I hope you enjoy the CTF. And please, if you're solving a web or a pwn challenge or something that comes with a downloadable file or the source code, please solve it locally first, just to keep our infrastructure running as smoothly as possible.